This video was intended to be the first of a series comparing anatomical structures in humans and other species in order to better understand why we look and move the way we do today. Each video will exhibit a different creature and structure, and I hope that with a balanced combination of personal anecdote and science, you find this series both interesting and enjoyable. I only ask that you approach it with an open mind. Now, it is time to begin. I did not expect that voice to come out of you. This phrase is but one of many that people use to enlighten me of the apparent mismatch standing before them. Humorous as this may be, when I reflect upon these exchanges I have on occasion become saddened, that these baritone vibrations I project may never carry substance and will simply dissipate. But with their offhand comments, these strangers have induced within me a sense of social responsibility, condemning me to forever seek that substance so that I might wield a voice, bolstered by purpose. That which I have found, ironically, goes no deeper than the muscles that allow me to proclaim its discovery. In order to convey this purpose through speech, the muscles of my larynx must contract and relax to change the shape of my vocal cords, which vibrate with the passing air from my lungs to create sounds. These muscles modulate the pitch of my voice by controlling the speed at which the vocal cords vibrate. Therefore, these sounds are generated first as an impulse in my brain, which then travels through a nerve to reach the muscles that control my vocal cords. This nerve is known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and was named for its odd course from the brain to the larynx. Considering the proximity of these two structures, one might assume that this nerve travels directly between them. After all, that path would be the most safe and efficient. But it doesn't, so it isn't. Instead, the recurrent laryngeal nerve extends down from the brain to loop around an artery above the heart. Only then does it return up to the larynx. In other words, what could be accomplished in but a few inches is instead achieved in over a foot of length. What's more, there is absolutely no functional reason to take that detour. Imagine our amazement, then, when we discovered that very same feature in the neck of a giraffe. Giraffes boast an average neck length of six feet, and retained within these golden towers is a recurrent laryngeal nerve that spans a length of up to 15 needless feet. If we consider this excess length inefficient for humans, it is a glaring understatement for the giraffe. So to understand why it resides within us as such, we must now turn our attention to the oceans. Fish do not possess a neck, but they do possess the components we have discussed thus far. In these aquatic species, the laryngeal nerve takes a more direct path to the gills, which ultimately proceeded and gave rise to the larynx. The oceanic precursor to land-dwelling, four-legged vertebrates also likely shared this feature owing to their lack of neck. But as their necks elongated over time, this nerve remained hooked around the aortic artery and was gradually pulled to the position we find it today. And while we humans, other terrestrial species, and even oceanic mammals exhibit this feature, its living champion is the giraffe. So with the twitch of my vocal cords and these brief disruptions of air, my recurrent laryngeal nerve emits its own story, a story of kinship. A kinship unveiled by the seemingly useless detour of a nerve hidden deep within our bodies, evidence of a common ancestor we all share. Gazing upon the giraffe, I understand that for some this may be a far reach. So if that was not enough to elicit this feeling, consider one last thought. We are often characterized by our unique two-legged stride and upright posture, much as the giraffe is defined by its exceedingly long neck. Traces of these features were left behind three to five million years ago, written within bones that had been swallowed by the earth at a time when the climate became cool and dry. In this arid landscape, the jungles of Africa slowly gave way to the encroaching savanna, likely driving our ancestors out upon the plains. Thus, it is from this time, buried within African soil, that we see human-like bones, among other features, assume their modern shapes. When these jungles retreated, they also bore less food, and those species better able to endure the sparse vegetation became masters of the savanna. It was during this time that giraffe necks elongated to the heights we see today, with every inch no doubt aiding them in the fight to forage. In other words, humans and giraffes concurrently became the species we are today, side by side, in the heat of the African savanna, two beings compelled by an intense desire to reach. 
Depressingly poetic it is, then, that our larynx, our capacity for language and culture, allowed us to outreach our towering companions. Giraffes may go extinct within my lifetime or within the lifetime of my progeny, and we have stripped the earth of this majestic beast for little more than personal gain. In a span of only 15 years, habitat destruction and poaching nearly cleaved their numbers by 40%, leaving a mere 80,000 to roam our ancient homeland. I cannot help but consider the nerve of those poachers. The recurrent laryngeal nerves of those poachers are identical to those which reside within their prey, and with every neural circuit severed they betray a bond that extends back millennia. A bond that not only binds us to our long-necked cousins, but also unites family with family, and kingdom with kingdom as branches reaching from the same seed. I often wonder what the world might be like if we all felt this tie of kinship, especially among our own species. Too often is our physical structure misconstrued to drive wedges, forge separations, and erect barriers. Our relation to the earth is written in our bodies, and it is here among bones, muscles, and nerves that I fulfill my responsibility. So with these final baritone waves, I express hope. That as my children and grandchildren look up to the creature who presides over Toys R Us, I will tell them not a story of what was, but of what is.